I didn't know what I was going to do today, but I talked to Cindy last night about doing something on death today. And then I changed my mind and I thought I'll do something on life today. Until I got into the office this morning, I got there about a quarter to five this morning. And I've got a great radio system in my office. It's called my phone. <laughs> and I turned it on and the first song that came on was Live Like You Were Dying by Tim McGraw. So I'm like, here we are in death again. I have God telling me to just go with my original instinct. You know, the thing about death is that everybody's going to experience. Um, every single person, I've said this <clears throat> numerous times on sermons that I've done throughout the years. <clears throat> every single person that's listening to this live, and there's a large crowd here today, thank you all for showing up. New people, thank you for coming. Wayne? <laughs> Everybody that's listening to this today is going to die. I know that people think that, oh, well, I've got another 30 years. You think what you want to think. You don't determine that. God does. But every single person that's listening to this sermon right now is going to die. Whether you're young, whether you're old. And here's something else. People talk about, oh, you don't always get to die before your children do, right? It's very seldom do spouses die at the exact same time. So you're going to be leaving loved ones behind. What impact are you going to have on their lives when you're gone? Now, <clears throat> I know somebody pretty closely that got some bad medical news lately. Um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Cindy about it. Well, Saturday, I was talking to Cindy about it. They ended up having uh, cancer, but they have three kinds esophageal, prostate, and colon. Boom, boom, boom. The prognosis isn't good. So, what do you do when you get that kind of news? What do you do when you know that? <clears throat> Your life at any time could be taken from you and cut short. Here's what you do. You live. First off, we know the greatest position of all. That's God. But it's not, and people always go, I don't know why God let that happen. I don't know why they died. You're right, you don't know why. But God does. Everybody that's sick isn't going to get well. It's God's will how he uses people. And I know that we think, <coughs> we know that we think that, oh, if we pray hard enough, this is going to happen. And, and a lot of the times it does. But we seem to forget that it's God's will. The Bible teaches us God's will be done. It doesn't say man's will be done. It says God's will be done. If God wants you here, you'll be there. If God wants you there, you will be there. But don't forget who holds that card. It's the God card and God's the dealer. It's called life. God runs our life. There's nothing that we can do in life that God doesn't know. There's no alternative way that we can live that God doesn't know. You can't outsmart God. You can't lie to God. You can't buy God. By God. <clears throat> we have to live by God. His rules, his regulations. That's it. So this guy that has all these cancers running through his body, do you give up? Or do you just go, man, eh, it is what it is. Or do you start living life? Do you give it all you've got until you've got nothing else to give? This is what we do. We give it all we got. Because God blessed us with however many years of breath, however many family members, however many grandchildren, wife, husband, whatever. God granted and blessed us with those things. Don't take them for granted. And like I said earlier, 
People don't die together normally unless it's an accident or, you know, murder, suicide, because that's what happens these days. Hug who you have. Love who you have. Never take for granted who you have. I'm going to tell you a true story about a guy I went and saw at the, guys, just been 10 years ago. I went and saw at the hospital, and he was dying. His wife was out of town on her way to see him. And he was talking to me, and I was praying with him. And I said, is there anything I could do for you? And he said, I wish I had one more thing. And I'm like, oh, here we go. This great big wish list of life. You know, I wish I had one guy, and I wish this, this. He goes, honest to God, true story. I wish I could hug my wife one more time. Don't forget to hug your loved ones. Because you just don't know. Hug your children. Love them. You just don't know. Don't go without letting the people that's around you know how much you love them. Because just like that, it's gone. Amen. Now, there's abundance of Bible verses about death. <clears throat> Knowing God's view of life, suffering, and death, that we can better sort out the questions we have. Here's things what people say. You start dying the day that you were born. Two things you can't beat, death and taxes. I want to change this little story with you today. Because, see, I happen to believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in the Bible that if we know him and we follow him, we shall not taste of death. So instead of you're going to live to die, see what I'm going to do? I'm going to live to live. Because I'm not going to die. You can take this. Nobody would want it, but if you do, I'll put it up for auction. You can take this body, but you can't take my soul. That belongs to God. So when I close my life, my eyes, I'm just going to reopen them in heaven immediately. So I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. Amen? And that's how we should all look at life today. If you believe and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're not touching death. You beat it. Because he beat death for us. So when we leave this earth, we're glory back. We're in heaven. Amen? Amen. Ecclesiastics 3.1. For everything there is a season, a time, for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. All of life has a beginning and an end. We can rest in the fact that God created both. He created the beginning, and he also created the end. Now, we get to choose that end. We get to choose when this body dies. We get to choose how our ending is going to be. Is your ending going to be in hell? Or is your ending going to be in heaven? Choose that today. Because you do get to choose. Regardless of your age, regardless of who you are, your economic standpoint in life, whether you drive a Pinto or a Mercedes, whether you live in a, in, in a hotel, whether you live in a, in a mobile home park, or whether you live in a mansion, it doesn't matter. We're all the same in the eyes of God. We get to choose. We get to choose. I can't choose Lewis's route where he's going to go when he dies. Now, we can give him all the information that we can give him. We can tell him how God's impacted our lives. We can tell him about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can give him all the things that he needs to make the right choice. But the bottom line is the choice is his. So we have to equip the people around us with the right choices. Amen? Amen. Psalms 116.15 Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Lord does care about his people. Each life is valuable to God. God does not want us going to hell. And as a matter of fact, God has never, and I'm excluding Satan, God has never, ever, not once, sent somebody to hell. 
Their actions have. Their way of life has. Their disobedience to God has. But God has not sent anyone to hell. Hard to believe it. God doesn't look up from heaven and go, hell, 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 hell. God looks up and goes, your mind be better. Your mind be better. Your mind be better. God looks down and says, please repent and accept Jesus Christ. Because I want you to come home one day. He doesn't go, I don't like the way you look or smell. I want you with him. He wants everybody with him. We want, our goal as pastors and evangelists and, and congregation members should be very simple. Let's make heaven so crowded that by the time we get there, it's elbow room. So we're talking, anybody ever been to Tokyo other than me? Wait. Go try walking downtown Tokyo, Japan at about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. You think New York City's busy? There's no traffic in New York compared to Tokyo. That's how busy we want heaven. Amen? Amen. Psalms 139.16 Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. There are a number of days for each of us. God's already got them all planned out. The Bible calls us wise if we recognize we cannot add days to our lives, but live intentionally with what we have. What that verse is saying is, when you're born, your name's in the book of life. You have this many days. What are you going to do with them? Are you going to be a snot, snooty, arrogant, egotistical, not humble, just a piece of, you know what? Are you going to go out and help people and love people and build people up to get them to where God wants them. And God wants them with him. Are you going to sacrifice everything that you have for one belief? And that one belief is that God can and will do the impossible in your life. Because he's God. I'm telling you right now quintessentially the truth. God will God can, God has, and he has spoken his word in the Bible to be the unfallible truth of a holy one that says, if you live by me, I will grant you eternity with me. That's what we have to do. But in order to do that, you've got to sacrifice at times you. The Bible says to sacrifice self. It doesn't say to sacrifice self sometimes and we'll be okay. You've got to put down self to build up worth. And if you do that, I'll see you in glory. Job 1, 20, 21. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. From back here, it looks like Wayne shaved his head. <laughs> And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This phrase, you can't take it with you, reflects this verse. Our soul is eternity, eternity, but possessions are not. That includes our flesh. That includes everything. This isn't God's. This is skin. This isn't, this isn't mine. It belongs to God. Whatever, he, whatever we are is his. Whatever you own is his. I had a farmer one time said, I've got 5,000 acres in Butte, Montana. God's got 5,000 acres in Butte, Montana. He's letting you borrow it right now. And one day he may want it back, Jack, if you don't start acting right. And God has taken from people that think they're holier than thou. These people that cause problems for God's chosen people. If you think for one second that you're immune from God's wrath, you are sadly mistaken. Because he will take it just like that, and you'll wonder what happened. And then you got to look back and go, oh, man, 
Shouldn't have said that or done that. Should have been this way, this way, this way. Those are called learning lessons of life. By the way, it's in the Bible. It's learning lessons of life about how to live life. How we should live life every single day. The week before last, when I was here, I said the pretense of Jesus' ministry was to what? Love. Love. How hard is it to love? Love one another. Help one another. Encourage one another. Be strong with one another. Be there as one. That's why this church is congregation. That's why this church is almost completely full today. It's because of love. It's because of being in the body of Christ. It's because we have one goal, and that goal is to make sure that every single person out there listening, every single person in here today, goes to glory to be with God. And if that means sacrificing it all, you better sacrifice it all. God took Job's children from him. How could he do that? Here's God's philosophy. I gave you your seven sons and three daughters back. They're just different. So I took 10, but I gave you 10. Careful how you treat God. Careful how you worship God. Because what we think and what he thinks are two different levels. And we're not on his. We're not on his level. He knows it all. We don't know nothing. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, <clears throat> becoming like him in his death. <clears throat> now, suffering doesn't sound pleasant. We don't know. Nobody likes to suffer. Nobody likes to cry. Nobody likes to be sad. Nobody likes to be hurt. However, Jesus suffered <clears throat> because he knew he had to. Because he knew he had to sacrifice. Because he knew in order for us to have any chance at all, in order for us to have any chance at all on earth, he had to suffer for us. So I don't want to hear anybody else complain about, I don't want to. Do you think he really wanted to be beat up, spit on, mocked? crowned with thorns that deep put into his skull? Have those rods basically put into his body and then hung and be pierced and then come on man. For real, get over yourself. That's suffering. This, that's not suffering. This isn't suffering. You know what this is? This is a blessing that we get to suffer a little bit. That we get to be like him for a little bit. We get to feel what he went through for a little bit. Because if we're feeling that, that means we're doing something. We're doing something for him. Just like Job, God's chosen suffer sometimes. But he always breaks them out shining at the end. So you may suffer a little while. But when you're done suffering, good God Almighty, glory is God. And I don't mean glory bound. I mean glory here on earth. You will get to receive what God promised. And that's the prosperity that he'll allow you to have. Right? Amen. 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 Lord have mercy, mercy. How could that be? How could that be? How could a God love us so much that if we suffer a little, he'll give us a lot? Because he made that promise from the Gideon from day one. See, God's the original G. You know that, right? He's the OG. He's the original everything. God is God. You hear about these talking about the OG this, OG that. There's only one OG, and that's God. He's the original. He, he, he originated everything. Amen? Amen. Amen? When suffering enters our lives, we can use the time to learn and become more like Jesus to understand why God is allowing us to suffer. Because if God's allowing you to suffer over something, it's because he's got something great for you at the other side when it's all over. I don't mean a little great. 
I mean Mount Rushmore grave. I mean get ready to chisel your face up there grave. That's what God's got for you. Have the camera over here. Can, can I ask why you're laughing at me, Bonnie? <laughs> this, this girl just walks in. I say something. Who, what's your name? <laughs> your, your name is get out of here now. That's an awful thing, man. So, Mrs. Val, what kind of parents? Are, you know what? Here's a true story off the subject. I went to a, I went to school with a guy. You want to know what his name was? Listen to how cruel parents can be. His name was Fred Stump. Guess what his middle name was? Flipstone. They named him Fred Flipstone. <laughs> <laughs> I, literally, I went to high school with him. Fred Flipstone. And if you don't think we didn't have fun with him, you're crazy. <laughs> but he had fun right back with him. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4 7. But we have this trait. Mrs. Now, I'm, I'm preaching. 2 Corinthians 4 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the Surpassing power belongs to God and not us. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 18. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentarily affliction is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond our comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Views for when we are afraid of the pain of death. Here's the hardest thing about death. The hardest thing is leaving your loved ones behind. It's departure. It's the exodus. It's the sleep. The Apostle Paul said that um, cause our bodies tense. In 2 Corinthians uh, 5.1, I think. Um, if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God. Death is trading an, an earthly, mortal, and frail body for a heavenly, immortal, and indestructible body. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Case notes. Don't live in fear of death. Because if you're a professing Christian, and you really are, come on, really, what's there to be afraid of? Go through a little pain, go through a little suffering, go through a little sacrifice. At the end, you're going to be blessed. Then when you die, which you won't, because Jesus says we won't die, then you're in heaven immediately. What does it matter? What does it matter what we go through here? Literally, wonder. I'm not here for me. I'm here for all of you guys. I'm here for my family, my grandchildren, or my children. I want what they. I want them to be so much better than I ever thought I could be. I want them to be be presidents. I want them to, to train Olympic athletes. You know, I want them to live as well as they can live, and it's possible through what we do in our faith in God. But we sacrifice. Parents, grandparents, we sacrifice daily for everyone else. That's what Jesus did. He sacrificed from the day one of his ministry. He started sacrificing. He got rocks thrown at him. He got mocked. He got ridiculed. He got spit on. And then we know the ending. You know what the ending is? He got ascended into heaven. That's the ending. How cool is that? How cool is it? Then we get to do what Jesus did. Now we're not going to ascend like he did. There's not going to be a bunch of witnesses that go, oh, there goes John and Bill and Charlie. All right, Charlie, I'll be clean. Brian, we're not going to have witnesses that say, oh, we saw them leave. But we're going to know. And Jesus is going to know. Because as soon as we get there, we're going to bow down and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? Don't fear what you're going through today. Don't worry about the suffering that you go through today because I, I, I can't be more explicitly clear. When the suffering is over, 
This is biblical, not, not just biblical, it's theological. It's from the book of Josephus, the book of Nicodemus. Those books have it in there too, where people have suffered abundantly, these Christians, and then all of a sudden they become the wealthy of the pillars. How does that happen? Because they suffered for a little while. It's not easy carrying the cross with him. But as Christians, guess what we do daily? We carry his cross. And if you're not willing to carry the cross, go to hell. Because that's where you're going. Oh, he can't say that. I just did. And you can't say that because it's the truth. You have two options. There isn't a third option. You either did or you didn't. And if you didn't, sorry. Not good for you. But if you did, welcome to glory. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to where we wanted to go, right? Welcome to everything you've ever dreamed of in your life. Welcome to being able to see the friends and family that you haven't seen forever because they'll be there waiting if they were Christians as well and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Don't be afraid of life. Don't be afraid of death. Live life like this is your last day you could ever have. Treat people like if you died today, God looked down on you and said, yeah, but you did that to him. You really think that there's a place for you in heaven? And I don't care what people say. You have to live a Christian life to be a Christian. Billy Graham said that. David Wilkerson said that. W.A. Criswell said that. Lester Roloff said that. Dr. John Rice says that. Uh, Charles Stanley says that. These guys are esteemed scholars in biblical relations, studies. When are you going to start? Now, none of them may be your favorite. But one of them might be. Isn't it funny that one out of 30 say the exact same thing? 30 different denominations of people, but they all have the same conclusion. How is that? Because it must be true. It must be righteous. It must be the way. I know the way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and not the Pope, not Joseph Smith, not any Hindu God, certainly not Muhammad, Jesus. One man changed it all. It's going to take a lot of men and women to change it back because we've lost our way. We've lost our way to society. We've lost our way to people trying to, to get into the minds of other people in a negative way. We've lost the fact that sacrifice, listen, listen seriously, listen, seriously, sacrifice breeds blessings. How? Because it is a promise from God. And if you open that book, that's called the good book for a reason, because it's good. There's pages after pages after pages of just horrid things. It's, it's like a horror movie at times. But the end of it is like, whoa, look at those blessings they got. Not just them, but their families. Because they were willing to do what they needed to do. Job never talked badly about God. Even his own wife told him to curse God. He wouldn't. Because he knew the power of God. He lost all of his land. He lost all of his money. He lost all of his camels. And he lost all of his children. But when it was all said and done, he stayed true to God. And he claimed, gave back a multitude more of what he lost. Now, we can't comprehend that, what it would be like to lose 10 children. We don't live in God's world. One day we will, and we'll understand why he did that. Right now, we look at it like, you know, why all these people have to die? He knows, but we're not here to have to question God. We're just here to follow him, to make a way. So that those little children right there, They've got a better chance of growing up in a better world than what this world is today. That's why we're here today. 
You guys are teenagers, right? You two? This world, before you were born, was different than it is now. That's how much it's decayed over the years. Worse and worse and worse. Do you want to know how we knew where people were when, when we were in my age, you know, back in the 20s? <laughs> you know how people knew where we were? It's the house that had the most bicycles in it. We did things as kids that you guys can't do today. We got to ride our bikes all the way through town and not have to worry about it. You can't do that today because of what's happened. We can change this world. We can change this way. We need to get back to God. We need to give it to God and we need to let go. But in order to do that, in order to do that, we've got to start living life. Don't fear what tomorrow brings. Just know it's going to bring it and we're going to exceed God's expectations with tomorrow because we're going to live for God in tomorrow. And here's the thing. If you're worried about tomorrow, don't. Don't worry about tomorrow. You want to know why? I know something you don't know. God's already in my tomorrow. God's in my next week. God's in my next year. He's already guided my steps. God said, Johnny, I'm going to be there. I'm going to support you, guide you, and strengthen you so that you can come up here and spew as long as you can and talk about me. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Without worry, without pain, and without regret, I'm going to serve one God, and that's him. God bless you. If God was here right now, he's done it. Okay. Yeah.